Hi, I'm going to show you how to set up SNMP version 3 in forms. So before we get started, make sure you watch my other videos on how to set up SNMP version 3 in traps. It'll give you a good base knowledge. We'll be using a lot of that, obviously. So with in traps, if something would happen, let's say the network interface would go down, whatever it might be, it would send to the NMS, the client here, say, yo, stuff went down, boy, go fix it. <laughs> or send out an email you can get really fancy with SNMP but with the NMS that was it so if something happened in that message let's say it didn't get there the NMS would know about it so that was more like UDP but with in forms what the client does is it not acknowledges it so the agent SNMP agent the switch the server knows that I got there because there's an acknowledgement so what makes this a little bit more complicated is that the authoritative engine has to run here and you also need a remote username and password so it's a little bit more involved the configuration within forms don't ask me why <laughs> it just works it's the way it is um, engine ID is used to identify I assume the SNMP instance that's running, kind of like a router ID or whatever, it has to be unique. And they're based off of MAC addresses, so that's kind of fun. So let's check out my favorite SNMP manager, Power SNMP Free Manager. You can download it for free. What we'll need to do is, for it depends on what you're running, you'll need to go to the authoritative engine and write this down. You'll need that, whatever is running. Let's get rid of that. That was already there from an old lab. So write that down. And we'll use that for our first command. So let's jump right into it. So SNMP server engine ID. And it's remote. So we could set the local one, this SNMP engine ID on the switch, but we don't have to. It generates its own. And then the host, right, who is the remote at the network management station, it's engine ID. And I'm just going to cheat and copy and paste this. <laughs> I have that already there. Now we get to the normal part, what we've always been doing. So we create a group. Version 3. Um, we can do a write. I don't really care at this point. You don't really need it. A right view but I'm just gonna add it anyways because I said so <laughs> you better follow me <laughs> now we'll create a user tied to that group and then the group name it's tied to three Auth, we're going to use SHA because I feel it's better than MD5, but then again, it's been, I think, broken. They found collisions. And then the encryption password, we'll use AES256 because why not? And the passphrase, I'm just going to name it that. Don't really care. There we go. We have the group and then the user. So that was pretty painless. Now the next part is we need to put in the username and password for the remote network management station that you have to set up ahead of time. So we'll keep it all the same, the passwords, just to make it easier on us. So you'll need this for the traps because you need a remote user, right? You're connecting. It's the authoritative engine, whatever. Um, very similar. So we'll use the same username as we did for the local username pass here. Same group. But we're going to put in remote. <laughs> and then the IP address 
of the NMS version 3 because why not oh my gosh so irritating the author Shaw why they put version 3 ESS it's just a beef I have with some of them some of them the host spells out version 3 and these are like v3 don't question Cisco logic <laughs> Priv underscore PSS. So let's hit enter. So now we configured the remote user, the network management station we'll be using to connect to. And then the next part is to set the informs, right? The, the traps that are basically informs. Where do we send them to? So we have. A, uh, we have a group, a user tied to that group, a remote user for the network management station. And now we need to point, like, where do we send the traps to, the informs. Host, that's the host IP of my network management station. This time we'll use informs by default as traps. Version, oh my gosh, we got to spell it all the way out. I'm going to use priv because we're, it has to match the group that it's tied to. And the group was use priv, so it has to be priv. And then we'll put derp user tied to that user. Now, don't question Cisco. There's Cisco and all their wiseness. But you also have to do... I know, right? We're sending in forms, but we have to enable traps. Just don't question it. Just follow <laughs> So there. So all kinds of information. If it changes, it'll send out an inform message to our network management station. So now that's set up. Let's go to the network management station here. We'll add the agent. Now it depends on what you're running. Oops, 250. That's my IP address of the switch. Version running three, version three. Derp user Shaw pass priv pass using Shaw 256. Oh, picked it up. So let's see. Can we query? Does it work? Sweet, I can view information. Perfect. So SNMP is working. Now we need to configure instead of trap users, you go to the authoritative. Let's see, no, is it authoritative engine? Yeah, authoritative engine. And then we need to add the user. So we did the remote command on the switch, the remote user, and we just put it. The same. So let's put that there. Um, Shaw pass. We just made it the same. I'm sure it could be different, but make it user priv pass Shaw 256. Derp user looks good. Another thing too is by default. Um, 161 is traps, 162 is informs. So you gotta make sure you're on the right port, man. Yeah, yeah, 162. Perfect. So let's see. Did it? Do show SNMP. Let's see if it's running. Yep, it's running. Port 162. Sending it to two. The informs are enabled. Global trap. Looks good. Requested variables too. 53 output. Okay, perfect. So things are flowing. And do show us an MP user. You can see there are two. There's the local one we created. See the engine ID? That's the engine ID of the local switch here. And you can see another user, the remote one. See, look at that. The engine ID is my uh, network management station. 
So you can see the credentials for that. Can we do host? Let's see. We have. Sending the two. 162 UDP port. Inform type. And that's the user. Let's exit show SNMP. What else do we got? User group. And that's pretty much it for show commands. Just to see what's going on. Should know all of them by now. It's pretty, pretty simple. So let's generate a life-changing event. Let's, heaven forbid, unplug a port. <gasps> the network interface went down. Call the Calvary. There are informs. Let's plug it back in. <gasps> it did something. I just unplugged a port from the switch that was active and plugged it back in. Look, they're in forms. Let's see. Let's see, F is about three, port three. Yeah, I unplugged it. Let's see what else. Let's go to the next one. Dude, it says down. <laughs> it's working, the informs. And then, oh, it changed it up when I plugged it back in. <laughs> it works. SNMP version 3 informs. See, it was pretty painless. So, all we really did was create a user, local user, and group so the network management station could connect to it. And we also configured on the switch the remote engine ID and the host so it knows its engine ID and the remote username and password. And then I pointed the the switch informed slash traps to the client here, my network management station. And it depends on what you use for your SNMP NMS manager. Um, yours might be different, but that's the basics of getting it to work. I cannot tell you how hard and how difficult it was to figure out all these little pieces out because online it's crazy there's nothing you search for snp version 3 in forms it's like oh yeah you can set up the thing and and then all you have to do is add in a little inform and you're done it's like mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm, right yeah show me show me do it in a lab <laughs> make it work for real <laughs> my eyes bled i suffered for you guys and i broke it down i will put the commands in the um description but really when you think about it it's not bad I mean the configuration is a little bit more than a trap but that's it as you can see I'm just as confused don't question Cisco that's the key do not question them and their and their greatness <laughs> you're just you just have to accept it just accept it I'm in the acceptance stage <laughs> I just make it work <laughs> I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.